Army Corps of Engineers General Leslie Richard Groves was responsible for directing one of the most monumental undertakings in history, known as the Manhattan Project. In less than three years, Groves successfully led one of the 20th century's most complex scientific, engineering, and managerial efforts to build the world's first atomic bomb during World War II. At the project's peak, more than 130,000 people were at work building first-of-a-kind nuclear reactors and plants at a cost, in today's money, of more than $20 billion. With remarkable speed and utmost secrecy, these efforts produced the first explosion of a nuclear fission bomb at Alamogordo, New Mexico, on July 16, 1945. Only an outstanding leader could have achieved such outstanding results in so short a time. General Leslie Richard Groves was such a leader. A closer look at his family, education, and character might help to better understand how he became the Manhattan Project's indispensable man. Born in 1896, in Albany, New York, Groves was the third child of Gwen Griffith Groves and Leslie Richard Groves, Sr. His father was a strict Presbyterian and an army chaplain who raised his children to strive for excellence. With his father often away on assignments, his mother took on the daily care and guidance of the children. The Groves children grew up with consistently high expectations and a profound sense of duty to their country. His parents' efforts paid off handsomely when young Leslie Groves won acceptance to West Point. He was graduated in November 1918, fourth in his class. He entered the prestigious Army Corps of Engineers, serving in Hawaii, Texas, Delaware, Vermont, and Nicaragua. Groves accumulated an impeccable record in the field as well as in the classroom. William Whipple, a contemporary in the Army, remembered Groves as large, tough, and very intelligent. Although only a captain, no one took this man lightly. He gave the impression of a man of great latent power, who was biding his time. His subsequent career did not astonish me. Groves had tremendous energy, determination, and drive. When the nation prepared for war in early 1941, Groves served as deputy chief of the construction division. He was responsible for housing an army of a million men in camps all across the United States. Working with contractors, he built a number of plants to produce tanks, armor plate, TNT, rifles, and other essential arms. One of his responsibilities was to oversee the construction of the War Department's new headquarters, the Pentagon. The world's largest office building was completed in just 16 months under Grove's supervision, bringing greater efficiency to the War Department chain of command. His ability to accomplish large projects under enormous pressure led to his selection as commanding general of the super-secret Manhattan Engineer District, otherwise known as the Manhattan Project. General Groves took charge of the Manhattan Project on September 17, 1942. The job of building an atomic bomb in less than three years seemed impossible. Recent discoveries in theoretical physics predicted the possibility of an atomic bomb, but the necessary materials, enriched uranium and plutonium, had been produced only in microscopic quantities. Here it is, General Groves, plutonium. Well, that's uh, the first time I've seen it, but if you don't mind, I wish you'd hold that under it, because after all, there's uh, about $50 million uh, in that test tube. With major technical problems unsolved, Groves moved forward decisively. He recruited people who demonstrated intelligence, initiative, and trustworthiness. People like Lieutenant Colonel Thomas F. Farrell, 
who became his deputy in early 1945. Working with America's leading corporations, including DuPont, Monsanto, General Electric, and Chrysler, Groves ordered the design and construction of industrial-scale manufacturing plants without the benefit of pilot scale models or even completed blueprints. At his own insistence, Groves was promoted to Brigadier General so he could deal more effectively with senior military officers, corporate officials, and scientists. His most important appointment, as well as his most controversial, involved J. Robert Oppenheimer, a brilliant theoretical physicist at the University of California at Berkeley, Oppenheimer had little experience as a manager. He was also reported to have relationships with communist sympathizers. But Grove saw in Oppenheimer the man who could help him build the bomb. An uncanny judge of character, Groves wrote that Oppenheimer's potential outweighed any security risk. As director of the Los Alamos Laboratory, Oppenheimer made great use of his extraordinary intelligence and interpersonal skills. In addition to the laboratory at Los Alamos, Groves oversaw the building of huge production centers at Oak Ridge, Tennessee and Hanford, Washington. Two makeshift secret cities grew to accommodate tens of thousands of workers and their families almost overnight. At Oak Ridge, Tennessee, a gigantic facility housed the first uranium enrichment process. At the Hanford Engineering Works, the world's first plutonium production reactors rose along the Columbia River. Groves made his decision based upon expert counsel. He had a knack for knowing which path to take. Colonel John Lansdale Jr., in charge of his counterintelligence corps, remembers that Groves had an uncanny intuition for the right answer. I can remember more than one occasion when he returned something I wrote for him to sign with the notation, not right, do it again. He had extraordinary perceptiveness and an intuitive instinct for the right answer. Most of us working with him performed better than our intrinsic abilities indicated.